Welcome everyone to my video tutorial how to create anything in ArchiCAD. Today I will show you the Morph tool. You can find the Morph tool in your toolbox, it's right here. And then you have different options to draw a Morph. I will first show you some general things about a Morph. How to draw it. You can draw it in 3D, you can draw it in a section, you can draw it in the elevation or just on the floor plan like I do right now. So now we have a rectangle and it's just a flat rectangle. It's not a 3D corpus right now, but you have different opportunities to, to change your morph, to transform it to anything you want to. So it depends on where you click at, where's your cursor. You have um, the little magnet so this means that you're on a surface or you have this mercedes star that means that you are on on an edge or you can have this hook and then you know that you're on a corner and depending on where you click at you will have different options in the archicad pet palette like you see right now we are on a surface and now we can say we expand our surface so we can type in for example two meters and press enter and now we have this um, yeah this geometrical shape or form and like I said you can add different things to your form depending on where you click at for example on, on this corner we can we can give it a, a little bow or something like this Now it's a round corner. You won't have this option when you click at the surface or the edge. But there you have different options. So the best thing is to play uh, around when you've created a morph. And then you will see what kind of options you have. And you always can draw or add something to your, to your morph with the pen. So I start here and then I can choose lines or rectangles or whatever and I can draw another rectangle on this surface and now I can click on this little surface and can expand only this part of the morph but it's still one big morph. Okay, what's, what can I do when I have more than one morph? Then you have the bool operations. You will see them here in my taskbar, but on default they are not here. You have to add them to your taskbar. So you go into Window, Taskbars, I guess. I'm using the German version. You will find it. And there it is, Morph. And when you're adding this, you will have this little taskbar right here. And you can put it to the top so it doesn't disturb you. And I will add another morph next to the one we just draw. And now with the bool operations, we can put morphs together or we can subtract morphs from another or intersect, doesn't matter. So I can say, okay, this is right now one morph. When I click at it, everything is highlighted. What is this good for? I will show you some examples later, but first I will show you another important thing when you're drawing uh, morphs. You know this little arrow here? It's um, the blue arrow or the gray, whatever, on default, but you have the option to switch on the white arrow. And if you ever wondered where it's good for, right now I will show you. So I can click on a surface or on an edge or on a corner with the white arrow for example this surface and then you see this is highlighted in green and no other surfaces are highlighted in green so when I now press on delete I only delete the one surface I highlighted the same thing about edges you see this is bigger green than the rest and I press on delete and now it's gone so it's a little bit like SketchUp when you're switching to the white arrow and you can click on surfaces or edges or corners and delete these things or edit these, uh, these things um, specially. 
we will go back and I will give you an example for creating hatches in ArchiCAD. Just the same thing we did right now. This time I, I choose this option because we can give it a, the third dimension directly. And we could say this is not the default material but it is nature bush or hatch. Um, here in, in the OpenGL view in 3D it doesn't look very good but if you render it it's quite uh, it's not good or perfect but it's okay for creating a, a quick render to show somebody where the hatches are and then you have the opportunity to make uh, tubes with morphs that's the, s the second option and you can put them wherever you want even along the, the set um, yes you can put it <laughs> up and down you know what I mean and if you render it it will look quite okay we, we can have a, a brief here it doesn't look like this okay it will look like this that's like I said it's okay you just see that it is that it's not very hyper realistic it's not a, a, a organic form but the um, leafage it, itself it, it looks quite okay if you're having some Photoshop skills you can you can render it like this and then you can edit it a little bit and it will look quite realistic okay what else could I show you I will show you how to create a, a tarp on something like this with a little uh, bowing so we create a flat rectangle and when we press inside of the surface right in the middle we can choose the third option bowing and we will make the circle bigger than the whole rectangle is so we will get a very smooth bowing you can use this for for tents or tarps or whatever you're creating in ArchiCut or sails. Okay, so these are quite the basics and now I will give you an example, especially for the pool operations. Here we have a facade and in front of it it's a wall, just a simple wall. And now there comes a very cool feature about ArchiCut. You can transform anything in ArchiCut to a morph. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. But in this case I will transform this wall into a morph. So I right click on it and I can say convert into morph. And you can do this with everything in ArchiCut. Even with imported objects. So now it is a morph and I can use the bool operations on it. I switch back into a section I created right in front of the wall and the first first thing I will show you is to how to subtract morphs from other morphs. This is my logo and I will create a morph that looks like the logo. So I click on the morph tool and then I press the space bar for the magic wand and if I press here, I'm quite sure ArchiCut will automatically create the shape, but without the hole in the middle. So I will first create the hole in the middle, and then I'll press on the outside. Okay, maybe it did work, it did work, yes. But I can't see it in the section, I don't know why. Right now, okay, press uh, the tap bar, tap button to first switch to the little one then we will give give it the third dimension with the first option in our pet palette and after this we will give this thing the Q uh, third dimension and now we can click first on what we will subtract from another morph so first the little one and then we go on subtract and then we click on the second one now you see there's the hole in the middle. 
Okay. Now, before I continue, I will change the material of this wall into default concrete. Concrete, And I will show you, yeah, quite important thing. So I will go back into the section. I will put it a little bit back so I think I can... No, I can't see the morph. I don't know why. But I can't see the morph. I even can't see it here. Why? Ah, here it is right now. Okay. So I will put the morph maybe up here or down here. Switch back into the floor plan. And now I will put it not totally over the whole wall and not on the first edge. I will put it a little bit inside of the wall. So I want to subtract this cue from the wall. And like you've seen, I changed the material to concrete and this is simple white. This is what I want to show you when I subtract this from here. The whole the subtraction I just created is white. So every time you subtract something from another morph, the subtraction will have the material or the surface color or whatever from the morph with which you subtract it. <laughs> I hope you know what I mean. So I press Control and set. Go back into 3D. And I change the material of the queue to a default concrete. Click OK. Now it's the same. And then I say subtract again. And now you see no white anymore. So this is this is important. It's of course it's possible to change the surface material later. But it's a little bit annoying if you have if you have these surfaces, these little ones, and you have to click on on each of the, of them. And yes, it will cost a lot of time, and it's not necessary if you if you think about it before you subtract more. Okay, what else can we do? We go back into the section, and I press on L for the line tool, and I will draw some. Yeah, quite random lines. Or maybe... I know the door is 220 high. I draw some... Okay. Now I know where the door is. That's what I wanted. I want to cut out the, the queue again. So... We're not finished yet. I press Ctrl, Shift and A for search and activate. Click on the red line, click on the rectangle, click on the plus to have all lines in here selected. And I press Ctrl, Alt and E to duplicate the lines and I pull them up to here. Okay, I can delete the little one and I will draw a morph right in this, in the section. So I press the spacebar for the magic wand and the morph is created. So I go into 3D and I will give it the third dimension, the depth. Yeah, I can't see it on the floor plan. Okay, Control T, and then you can change where you can see it right here. And I say I will see it in every level. Okay, I hope I will see it. Yes, here it is. And I will put this over or about the whole wall because I want to subtract everything from it. Ah, okay, and I have to put it back down. This is what I forgot. Now here it is. Um, there's, a, there's a mistake in thinking. I don't want to subtract this from that. 
It's just the other way around. Okay. No problem. I will delete these lines. I didn't have to. I'll draw something like this. Put the morph in it. Say I can see it everywhere. Give it a depth. Change the material on default concrete. Go to the floor plan. Put this about here. Go back into 3D. No, go back into section. Put this one down. Go back into 3D. And then I subtract this from that. This is what I want to create. You can create some special surfaces, some special facades, for example. And many people want to know how to create perforated facades in Archicad. It's just the same thing. You go into the section and then you draw your holes, whatever it looks like. I could create one and duplicate or multiplicate them several times, doesn't matter. Put the morphs inside, go back into 3D, now I can see anything. Ah, that's because I, yeah, yeah, I know why. Because I created, I tried to create a morph on side of another morph and Agika didn't recognize it. Okay, that's something that ho happens very often. That's the reason why I put these lines from down here up to here to have nothing behind it. So Archicad can create what I want to create way better than when I do it in front of a facade or on a wall or another morph. So now it works. And I just say these morphs are one morph. Unite them. Go back into 3D. There they are. Give them a depth. Change again, maybe to red. I will put them down. And I will subtract them from the big morph. Why did this, why was this not good? <laughs> I know why, because I didn't change the position on the floor plan. And again, see it in every level. Go back on the floor plan, put this above the wall. Go into 3D, that's the best thing. Okay, press Shift and 3 to see everything. And now I subtract this again. And it didn't work, why did it not work? Not solid. These elements are not solid. Oh, I see why. Sometimes I don't know why Archicad is doing that, but if it happens, if Archicad gives you this error, not solid elements, then they are not close. They are not solid, yes. But you can do it manually, like I do right now. Click on the corner, go for the pen, go for the first geometrical option, and then close the open spaces and now it is solid. You can see it every time here in the info bar and it's it's okay there's no I think yellow exclamation mark that's that's okay it's not solid and now I can subtract finally and I have the red inside. One thing Archicad does not very good dealing with morphs is changing material. So I can change the material of the whole morph, but only for the whole morph. I'm wondering why the red thing is not changing. Now everything is red, maybe now everything gets yellow. No. Okay, that's crazy. 
but there are different options to change it. The, the most easy one is probably when you're clicking onto your surface catalog. It's the the brush with the with the tear or whatever it is called. And then you can change every surface manually. It's a little bit annoying. Click on it. This option is better, so you don't have to click on the material every time once you change. You click once and then you just press left mouse button on the surfaces. It's quite easy. Okay. That's the quickest option to change surface materials of morphs. But you can do it um, with the pet pellet as well, but it would last longer. Okay. Morphs can do everything, or you can do everything with morphs, that's better. You can create anything you want if you have the morph tool in Archica. And to give you an example or an overview, some tips and tricks maybe when you can use morphs or for what you can use morphs i will show you some examples again and i hope you learned something about morphs maybe if you want to see how i create a specific thing with morphs in archicad you can write a comment and i will see if i'm able to and then i will make another video for example I hope you enjoyed the video and you have a great day.